Hi, welcome. Uh, I'm here with Andrea, CEO and co-founder of uh, Warlift. We want to show you how to optimize your content with Warlift in 10 minutes. So how, where do we start, Andrea? Well, I mean, uh, you, you've written a, a nice article I see on, on the blog about the Atlas of the Century of Words. Let's, um, let's, let's look at it from, from the back point, from the back end, and, uh, and let's start. Well, first thing I want to show you is that, um, you know, the, the, the widget um, it can be open or closed. Now, now when you're writing, probably you don't want to have you know any annotation on on the article itself. So you you might want to you know keep the widget closed. As soon as you open the widget, what happens is that uh, as you can see, Wordlift is highlighting the primary concept of your article, and this is done using you know natural language processing. So uh, we, we 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 get the text, we we understand the text, and then we we match it with with content that we believe is relevant. Mm -hmm. So now I can see that uh, there are some concepts under content classification. What is going on there? Well, basically, um, all the um, concepts extracted that uh, we, we, we usually call entities have been grouped in, in different uh, categories. So the what, the where, the when, and the who. So this article, uh, you know, is, is really about two, two athletes and it's about uh, the century of words. Mm -hmm. In a way, uh, I think that you, you wanted to, to talk uh, about men and women and the relationship between, you know, these, these two um, um, amazing athletes, uh, you know, Fanny Blanket Corns and, and Carl Lewis. So I think that, you know, we should uh, start annotating, uh, you know, these, these two um, entities because these are really relevant for, for you know, the, the article. In a way, I think it's, it's also about men and women, you know. Um, when I do this, uh, basically, I'm, I'm choosing a data point. I don't know if, 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 if it makes sense to you, but beyond each, each, each one of these, of these concepts, there is data already. Um, so there is information that, that has been provided by Wordlift, and then you can actually use it for, for you know, enriching further your article. Mm -hmm. So where is this information coming from and um, how am I supposed to use this information that I'm getting? Right, I mean this is information is coming from, from the link, link Data Cloud, but it's mm -hmm. also coming from, from your own website in a way, because as, as you will start using Wordlift, you will uh, start adding entities to, to your website and these entities will, will become you know, additional uh, content that, that you can use to enhance the navigation. Uh, I want to show you one thing is that you can, you know, actually use the, the, the content uh, that, that Wordly provides, you know, after the analysis, for instance, for adding, you know, nice images, you know, that, that's funny. Uh, I, think, I think it's good to add it here. Um, so that's, that's really the first step. I mean, you've gone through a similar process like tagging, but, mm -hmm. but you're not using tags, you're using entities. Okay, so you're saying I'm optimizing now the article with just a few clicks. That's what we're doing here. It's done. I mean, believe me. Now, cool. now, as soon as I save, uh, what what's going to happen is that uh, uh, Wordlift it's going to write for you the, the the semantic SEO markup that you need to optimize this article, and it's going to become you know from a regular article. Uh, an annotated article, an enriched article, and that, that makes it you know high quality in a way because the the crawler from the search engine has to work a lot less because you are providing you know your unique insight on what content matters. I mean, you're saying this article is really about Carl Lewis and and Fanny Blank and Cohen, and it's 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 about a, a specific events. Uh, which 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 occurred in November 1999, mm -hmm. and uh, and and it's about men and women in a way because you you're creating you know the the main the, the male hero and and the female hero and and they're all within the same article. So we we're providing towards search engines with those concepts the explanation of the article. I mean we're telling search engines what the article is about. That is it? correct. That okay. is correct. Let me show you what happened on on, on the back end because basically. Um, by doing this with just a few clicks, you are already creating uh, um, all the information that will travel along your web page and that will be sent to, 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 to the search engines. Mm -hmm. And you can see that uh, basically there is, a, there is an article object over here which is exactly representing what we've written. And that's, uh, that's the uniqueness of Wordlift. I mean, Wordlift is not just working on page with this semantic SEO, it's actually working off page. So it's creating a data point within your knowledge graph and it's providing these as, as a unique identifier for this specific article. So every article that you write 
right now it's 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 a node in your knowledge graph and oh, wow. this node is is presented to google with its unique id okay wow. so i'm helping google to build a better web that's what we're doing also in a way you're you're creating your own data you're sharing the, this data with machines uh yeah. starting from google and and then the machine can leverage on this data and and let's look at the data really i mean you you can see that there is a lot of information that it's coming straight from your article and uh, includes information about, of course, uh, the person, but it also includes information about the publisher. In this case, I mean, we, we're using uh, Wordlift as a publisher. I wanted to highlight these, these two errors over here because uh, when Wordlift uh, uh, creates a publisher, again, the publisher is an entity, and then the entity has its own property. And, and Google expects to have uh, um, the, the logo for the publisher 600 uh, uh, by 600 pixel. I don't know why is that, but uh, but I would uh, strongly recommend you to to update uh, the, the the size of, of the publisher um, logo. Logo. Okay. So if we go back to the article now, what am I supposed to do next to further optimize the article? Because so far we gave a lot of information towards search engines, but what about my users? Like how how can I improve the navigation of the users right. that come to my website? Well, first of all, let, let's have a look at uh, how the page has been has been created uh, uh, in these cases. So you can see that uh, all the entities have, have now uh, links, and and these links are pointing to to pages on your site that that are you know what we call entity pages, and and these are contextual information that you know someone might want to read, and this will prevent this someone from jumping into another website to, to learn more about, let's say, Carl Lewis. That's cool. So where do I find those pages that Wordlift created for me? Like, uh, where am I supposed to go? Wordlift uh, uh, creates these pages uh, within what is called the vocabulary. So oh, you, can, okay. you can find it over here on your website and, mm -hmm. and it's, it's, it's a list of all the entries that you have created and or the Wordlift I've created for you and then you can go into a, each specific entity um, and, uh, and and then you can you can optimize um, so let's let's have a look a little bit of, of Carl Lewis so you're saying each of those pages is going to be very uh, special because uh, it's gonna it's gonna be a page which is disambiguated so it has uh, specific information about uh, uh, several concepts that I decided uh, they were important for my website that is correct. I mean, uh, uh, basically, you, you, you are working every time for two audiences. You are mm -hmm. looking at your readers on one side, and that's, that's what you really want to care. And at the same time, you have a tool, you have an AI that works with you to work for machines. So in these cases, an entity, it, it's, it's a piece of content that you have to think of it as a uh, Wikipedia article. Mm -hmm. you know, it's something descriptive that provides context to someone that is reading an article. Uh, at the same time, you have properties that, that makes this piece of content unique. So this is, this is Carl Lewis and, uh, and, 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 and actually, you know, automatically Worldlift has created a link between, you know, this instance of Carl Lewis on, on your graph with, you know, the equivalent instance of Carl Lewis on, on DBpedia. Now, DBpedia is this, this large um, data repository that machine use to understand what is what. You so know? it's just the Wikipedia of open data, like in uh, a way, in a way. Imagine as, as, as a large uh, data set that that repurposes the content of Wikipedia and allows machine to understand who is who. You know that there right. are many Carl Lewis. So is this the athlete or or, is or the this movie the, maker? The right, movie maker. right, right, right. So with with this field here, you're seeing we are we are telling clearly search engines what the content is about, so that they will be able to read it. And understand the content. Well, that is correct, and 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 we're, and we're creating, as we say, a unique ID, which mm -hmm. means that basically, well, you are creating your own knowledge graph, and and that's that's a that's a representation of, of the knowledge graph that that you know the specific node in the graph that that has been created by by Wordlift for representing Carl Lewis. And, uh, and, uh, and you can see this is all done automatically by Wordlift. I mean, you, you didn't do anything about it. And that's, cool. uh, and that, that's uh, five star link data. And, and actually, we're, we're selling this you know, as an additional information within the JSON LD to Google. Now, I want to tell you one more thing. Um, basically, uh, I just found out a new, a new um, things that Google is doing. Uh, when you add uh, a link such as this one over here, I mean, mm -hmm. in this entity, this, this specific field is meant to uh, give you the possibility at the metadata level only to add uh, a link to equivalent web pages. In this case, you know, I'm just linking the, the Twitter profile of Carl Lewis. 
And, uh, and what I found out is that Google is now looking at this, this data, this, uh, this information, which is uh, um, you know, defined by the property scheme org, same as, as an in-lex. So oh, wow. if, if we could uh, uh, look at, uh, look at uh, um, the information that, uh, that uh, um, Twitter has in its search console, we mm -hmm. would see that uh, actually they will find us as, as a backlink. Wow. And that's terrific. So, so you're saying we're adding uh, links, external links, even though we're not affecting the user experience. So we're doing it in the back end of the page. That is correct. Wow. And, and, uh, and Wordlift is doing it for you. That's very powerful. Now, let me get back to the, to the article because uh, there are a couple of few things that, that we need to do uh, in order to, to, to further optimize it. As you know now, uh, the user experience is becoming so important, Gennaro. I mean, we know that the time span on a page, the way that the user engage with the page is really making the difference. Especially is, this, is this a signal or, uh, for Google, like how, how it's uh, user experience affecting also your rankings? Well, I mean, that's, it, it's becoming crucial with machine learning because uh, Google is looking at the behavior of the user, especially, you know, when you have long tail contents that are hard to position, you know. Um, so, so if, if, if there is a, one of these queries that, that Google has, 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 has you know, problem in, in, in correctly disambiguating, uh, the only thing that it can rely on is really the behaviors of its users. So mm -hmm. the time that we spend on a page, the way that we look at the page, you know, the way that we interact with the page, it, it's, it's, it's making a huge difference in, term, in terms of ranking. Uh, we, we've seen that, you know, a Wordlift is creating a link to Carl Lewis, it's creating a link to Fanny Blanker score, and that, that's terrific, it's good, but maybe you don't want to have a link to men and women as a concept because this is for you is important to classify the article, but it's mm -hmm. not relevant in terms of navigation for a reader. So what you would do is just to go over here to the entity men and, and women, and you would just deselect the link. This means that the metadata for men and women will still be there, but the mm -hmm. user will not see a link. Okay, so you allow me to optimize the content even though I'm not going to show internal links to my users. That's very cool. But what about now the uh, really the, the chance to show my readers more, like if they want to see more uh, of the content within my website, what can I do? That's very easy because uh, uh, you can use uh, one of the widgets that comes with Wordlift. Mm -hmm. And in this specific case, we can uh, uh, test the faceted search and see if it provides uh, valuable data. So we, we will just uh, uh, select it from here and add it on the page. Then we're going to save. So again, it's just one click. It's, uh, again, it's just more. one click. You're not going to write any code. You're not going to think too much about it. I don't want to write code. I don't want to know anything about you, you're code. Gonna have so to, you're going to have to. We'll, we'll take care of that. That's why, that's why I got Wordlift. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's your turn now to make my life easier. So. Absolutely. You have now a companion that works for you, Gennaro. That's great. You're not alone. So <laughs> let's, let's look at, uh, at the post right now. And, uh, and you can see already that uh, um, we have added uh, a very nice uh, widget that allows users to navigate your content using entities. So all the network of entities around this specific cluster of, 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 of articles is now used for you know, providing a, you know, a way of, of, of digging into your archive and, and saying, okay, yes, I want to read something about uh, you know, the International Association of Athletics that has something to do with the article that I'm reading or I want to read something about, uh, you know, uh, finding blank score. So you're saying the user can go on the page, uh, select the concept that he wants to read more and then Wordlift is going to pull up all the articles within the website that uh, talk about that concept. That is correct. It's also a way for the user to see mm -hmm. what's in the website, which is that's complex great. and that's right. terrific. Right. That's pretty right. much everything you need to do. Oh, that's amazing. So we optimized the content in just 10 minutes and, you know, we hope it was helpful to you as well.